Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Thank you for joining me today. I wasn't sure some of you would come back after I started all my lectures about the things we shouldn't eat and shouldn't do, but here you are again, and that tells me you want to be the best you you can be, and you want to be the best caregiver for your LO, your loved one. Well, I told you in my last episode that my husband and I went for a walk, and I wore the wrong shoes, and I had two blisters on the same foot. Well, that was incorrect. I had four. Four blisters, every toe except the big toe. Mm, Not happy feet. You can bet I won't do that again. No, I'll go for walks. Oh, yeah. You see, when we go out and walk, we talk, we decompress, we enjoy the sun coming up, the sun going down if he gets home in time. It's good for our relationship. It's good for our brain. It's good for our body. We soak in some vitamin C, which allows us to absorb vitamin D and B. Oh, yeah, good stuff but I'll wear the right shoes next time. Well, today I want to continue our discussion about things that we can do to prevent Alzheimer's. We, as of right now, cannot cure Alzheimer's. Oh, how I hope those words change. Yes, we want to one day cure Alzheimer's. But better yet, why don't we prevent Alzheimer's? Because if we don't ever have anyone get Alzheimer's, then we don't have to cure it, correct? Well, I think it's interesting to talk about, again, inflammation and what inflammation does to the body. And in the brain, we have inflammation that you can't see. And the word inflammation comes from the, the term that means set on fire or the, the Latin word. Oh, it was Latin. Let me look at my chip. Was it Latin or Greek? Hold on. I'm going to give it to you right here. Latin word, set on fire. So you've got this fire burning in the brain of someone who has inflammation in their brain. And if your loved one has Alzheimer's um, or many, or really, I guess, any cognitive issue, then there's some inflammation going on. Pretty much if you're breathing, you've got inflammation in your body, and we don't want that. We want to get rid of it. There are 400 miles, 400 miles of blood vessels in the brain. I don't know where you live if you want to figure out from your point to some other state or some other point where 400 miles is. We, My husband and I just moved 701 miles from um, South Carolina, so that's, uh, that's over halfway. That number of miles of blood vessels in your brain. An unhealthy lifestyle causes inflammation in the lining of the arteries and the capillaries, and then vascular damage results even in the brain. So you've got to think about what's going on in the brain there that's affecting the overall health of the brain and what are you going to do to promote the health of your brain. So who is at risk of inflammation in the brain? Anyone with the brain. Now that does let a few of the people I know out. What about you? You know some of those people, they are never going to have inflammation in their brain because they don't have one. No, you know I'm messing with you not. (laughs) You need to know that the changes in the brain for someone with Alzheimer's began 30 to 40 years before any symptom ever occurred. It's like with cancer. You don't all of a sudden just wake up with a lump or you don't just all of a sudden wake up with bruising that started the night before. No, it started months and months, maybe years before, and enough damage and cells changed in the body that it came forth as a lump in the breast or bruises that we can't explain. And the same is with Alzheimer's. That disease has been eating away a little bit here, a little bit there, a little more in there, a little more there, a whole bunch here, a great big bunch here, until finally the symptoms become evident in everyday life. And that happens 30 to 40 years before symptoms. But we don't wait and want to wait until symptoms show up. It might be too late especially for some of our folks that are excellent actors or actresses. They are covering for themselves well. Their spouses are covering for the other spouse, just making amends, making sure everything goes smooth for that person so that no one knows that Mary has a problem and John's covering for Mary. It happens a lot. So in... Also, we can't start being proactive or taking preventative measures 
too early. We're just talking about your body and you only get one. I don't care how many times you get plastic surgery. My phone just beeped. You still just have that same body and the inside of it is the same. The outside might look different, but you've not changed the inside of your body. And we need to make those internal changes. You need to know that Alzheimer's is not a disease of old age. No, it's not. There is this thing called early onset Alzheimer's. Uh, it's been diagnosed in people as early as in their 20s. Can you imagine that? And you think what your loved one is going through at the age of 70 or 80 is horrible? And it is, but imagine it at 20. Oh my goodness. You know, it can. It actually starts in our folks who are diagnosed with late onset, onset Alzheimer's, which is people diagnosed after the age of 65, before the age of 65 is early onset. But remember, it started years and years before that. So when the brain starts changing is when the disease starts. So we've got to be proactive where we should be from the beginning. And that's very important in how you are feeding your children, the examples that you are setting for your children, your grandchildren, as far as moving and being interactive, social activities, what they're doing for others that stimulates their brain and their sense of well-being. All of this is important, how much sleep they're getting. Yeah. Did you know even what the mother eats has an effect on the diseases of the unborn child? You knew that. That's why when you got pregnant, well, if you're a female watching this show, yeah, if you got pregnant, um, your doctor told you don't eat fats, don't drink caffeine, don't do alcohol, all this kind of stuff. Be careful what you ingest because it affects the baby. You got to think about what you ingested affects the baby physically. That includes the brain. So, it's, it's kind of scary when you think of all that has gone on in our lives that we cannot correct, or can we? Hmm. Well, we can't change it. It's already happened, but maybe we can correct it. Can we make these changes in our lifestyle and correct what's going on in our gut, correct what's going on in our heart, correct what's going on in the brain? Absolutely, yes, and that's the good news. That's why I told you this whole class series that I went through with Dr. Perlmutter gave me such hope. Mama had Alzheimer's. Grandma had Alzheimer's. Carol doesn't want Alzheimer's. And I know you don't either, but you've got to do the right things. So one in four um, folks has prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, and they have an increased risk of Alzheimer's. So there again, what we're eating, what we're putting in our body has a direct connection with that. Belly fat. They say belly fat equals brain damage because that is affecting your brain. So we're going to, in our next episode, talk about what we can do to prevent Alzheimer's. Um, some of it is simple. Some of it is a little more complicated, but it's all worth the effort we're going to put into it. But I wanted to lead up to this, helping you to understand how important it is. Because if I'm going to get you to throw away your ice cream, your french fries, <gasps> French fries, I've got to give up French fries. Well, you can do like I do. When I go out to eat, I will order four French fries. I'll say, please bring me four French fries. That's all. Don't bring me five. Don't bring me a plate of them, whatever you do. I'm like an alcoholic in the ABC store. Just bring me four French fries. And it settles it for me. And then I don't want them again for several months. But what you eat and what you're doing for your body, I'm hoping you're going to be willing to make some very important changes. I want you to live old enough, long enough, and in good health, so you can drive your kids crazy in a good way. You can drive them crazy by wanting to go do things with them, by wanting to go out to eat with them, by wanting to travel with them. I want to tell them what to do, because that's your job. I don't want you to live to an old age miserable, not knowing who you are, not knowing who they are. No, that's not what I want for you. That's not what I want for me. So let's work together. You on board? Let's make this happen. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Thank you for watching or listening, whichever format you might be taking this show in, and I appreciate you doing it, and we'll talk next time. Bye-bye, y'all. 
Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth, you can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.